Do you feel like siphoning all the gas from every car, van, truck, and gas station in your neighborhood and setting your math textbook on fire? Wonderful. We can help you avoid 25 to life in prison by watching this video by Fort Bend Tutoring and Mr. Witt. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT, and today's lesson is going to be about proving the quadratic formula. We're going to be learning how to take this equation, in other words, the standard form of a quadratic equation, this ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, we're going to learn how to take this equation into the quadratic formula that you have grown to love so much. This x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. In other words, where did this formula come from and how is it related to our previous equation? Yeah, the lovely ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. How are these two things related? Well, that's what today's lesson is about. How to take this into that. Okay, so let's get started. One thing you should know about making a proof in mathematics is that you can't use what you're actually trying to prove in the process of proving the proof. Does that make sense? Let me try that again. In other words, I can't use the quadratic formula in order to prove the quadratic formula. That's what I mean to say. So you're going to need another way to do it. So what are the other ways to solve a quadratic equation? Well, you could use the zero factor property if this was factorable or you can use complete in the square. Let's use complete in the square. And we're gonna see if it ends up giving us the quadratic formula. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and subtract c to both sides of the equal sign here, like so. I'll end up with ax squared plus bx equals negative c. I definitely want my first coefficient to be one. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide each and every term by a. All right, so we end up simplifying this left side here to give us x squared plus b over ax. We're going to go ahead and put a blank here, and then I'll have negative c over a, and then I'll have a blank right there. Your next step in the process is to take half of the middle term's coefficient. So taking half of b over a will end up with b divided by 2a and then you're going to square it. So squaring b divided by 2a, you'll end up with a positive b squared over 4a squared. Add that to both sides of the equal sign. So we have b squared over 4a squared. All right, lovely. Next, we're gonna go ahead and factor this, okay? So remember, what we're creating on the left side of the equal sign is a perfect square trinomial. And the factorization of this is always gonna be your variable x and whatever half of your middle term's coefficient was. And in this case, half of my middle term's coefficient was b divided by 2a. And you know what? I agree with you. This is an ugly b. Oh, it's just dreadful. I'm gonna fix it. All right, what do you think? That's a much better b, right? This stuff. So the factorization of our left side is going to be x plus b divided by 2a squared equals negative c divided by a plus b squared divided by 4a squared. Continuing on, I would want to go ahead and combine my fractions here on the right side of the equal sign. For clarity, I'm going to go ahead and switch these terms around over here on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and bring down the x plus b over 2a squared, this is going to equal b squared divided by 4a squared minus c over a. In order to combine these terms on the right side, we'll want to get a common denominator. And the common denominator for that 4a squared and that a is going to be 4a squared. So here I'm bringing down, once again, the x plus b over 2a squared. And this is going to be equal to b squared divided by 4a squared. And over here, yeah. I'm going to use 4a squared as my common denominator. And remember, whatever you multiply the original denominator by is what you'll need to multiply the numerator by. And we had to multiply a times 4a. Yeah, we had to multiply that to the numerator and the denominator. So now we end up with 4ac in that numerator over our common denominator of 4a squared. Well, now that I have that, we can go ahead and bring down, once again, this x plus b over 2a squared, and this will be equal to b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Yeah, just like that. See, already it's starting to look a little familiar, right? 
Yeah, we're, we're definitely getting close now, right? All right, it's at this point, we're gonna go ahead and use the square root property. Yeah, the square root property. See, I have this quantity with my variable x. Mm -hmm. It's being squared. I definitely need to get the x isolated. So I'll be taking the square root of x plus b over 2a squared, and this will equal to the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. It's at this point that the square root and the square will cancel out. However, because we have to guarantee that our result will be positive, this will end up giving us the absolute value of x plus b over 2a. All right? As our result. Because yes, you're right, the index of 2 and the exponent 2 does cancel out. But when you're taking the square root of any value, you must guarantee that you end up with the principal root, aka the positive root. So we have to guarantee that this value here is positive. That's why we need to have the absolute value of x plus b over 2a. On our right side, We'll go ahead and break up this square root to show that you'll have the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And in the denominator, we'll have the square root of 4a squared. All right, great. Let's go ahead and simplify that square root of 4a squared. And we'll say that we have the absolute value of x plus b over 2a. And this equals to the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2 times the absolute value of a. Because remember, we don't know what that value of a will be in any given problem. Sometimes the a value is negative, sometimes it's positive. But in this situation, we need to guarantee that our value of a is positive. So at this point, this is a true statement. Now, let's continue solving for x. So since we know that this current equation is possible, we're going to set up two different equations because the absolute value is the distance to zero. You can be equidistant either to the left or the right of zero. We're going to need to set up two different equations to simulate that. So my first equation is going to be x plus b over 2a equals the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So notice in this first equation, I just dropped all of the absolute values, okay? So this is assuming that everything here is gonna be positive, and then I can go ahead and solve for x. So knowing that, I'm going to subtract b divided by 2a to both sides of the equal sign here. And at this point, I can go ahead and write this as x equals negative b over 2a plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Well, combining our like terms here on the right side, this gives us negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So, so far we have half of the quadratic formula. So let's keep this in mind and let's look at that second equation that's gonna represent our distance to zero coming from the left of zero. So we're gonna start off by having a big or, all right? So or is gonna be the introduction for our second equation. And our second equation will read as x plus b divided by 2a equals negative square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is gonna represent our value to the left of zero. So in solving for x in this equation, I'll subtract b divided by 2a to both sides of the equal sign here. And this gives us x equals negative b divided by 2a minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Combining your like terms here, you'll have negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And this is the other half of our quadratic formula. So here are our two halves of the quadratic formula that we've solved for thus far. So all we have to do now is combine our halves together to get negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And there it is. There's our proof for the quadratic formula. Red boxing it. Done and done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude this video for finding the proof of the quadratic formula. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace. Thanks for watching. We feel great knowing that you got some help and you're safe and sound. Now, if you'd be so kind as to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fort Bend Tutoring, and like us on Facebook. We'd be much obliged. It's over. It's over. I know you were expecting more, but it's done. No, 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 no. Calm down. You're, you're, it's okay. It's over now.
I'm going to put a red box around this. Red boxing it. 